Right, so uh, I've been talking a lot about my car lately, and this is kind of tangentially related. Some of you might still know that uh, I made my initial splash on the internet with uh, very power efficient motherboards, and this is one of those. This is a, a very cut down motherboard where I removed most of the power supply components, VRMs and that kind of stuff, and um, optimized everything, made it as efficient as possible. and this computer, this entire board with uh, with the hard disks and the SSD and everything. Uh, this is a new server that I'm building for myself. Uh, it's going to be my NAS. And uh, this power supply I made mm, as like a combination project for the server and for the car. Because you see, the um, there is this product on the market. It's called a Pico PSU. And there is a special version of this called the automotive or the wide input Pico PSU. And these are power supplies that just like this one, take some kind of input voltage, convert it to 12 volts, and then also to five volts and 3.3 volts for your computer. The normal Pico PSUs accept only 12 volts and they just switch it straight through. And the wide input ones also convert the 12 volts. So you can uh, put in like four and a half to 24-ish volts or 30 volts on this um, board. And this is handy because, for instance, in your car, uh, but also in the server, in your car, the 12 volt battery, it's called 12 volts, but it's not on, at 12 volts all the time. Uh, when it's being charged, it's at uh, around 14 volts, and that is definitely too high for quite a lot of components in your computer. And when it's uh, depleting or like when it's cranking, it can go down to nine or 10 volts is definitely too low for a computer. Your computer will crash if it gets exposed to those kinds of voltages. So you need something to give a steady 12 volts to your computer. Uh, that's what this is. And of course, now the question is, why did I make something that's already on the market? Because there's, there's no way I'm saving any money with this. And that's kind of true. Uh, those wide input Pico P issues, they're about $70. Uh, to get one into the Netherlands, it's more like 100 euros, 90 to 100 euros. It's quite expensive because of uh, shipping and just general availability. It is doable, and honestly, uh, this board, all the components on it together, it's like uh, 50 euros plus the board plus like all the hours I put into it. This is this is not a money making endeavor. However. As you might know, uh, I've had a project a long time ago called MAD PSU, uh, which stands for Measurable and Adjustable Power Supply. And this is sort of an outgrowth of that. Uh, so the MAD PSU project got cancelled um, because of, well, things behind the scenes. I cannot really talk about it. But I still own pretty much all the technology behind it. And uh, so this is essentially a MAD PSU. Um, but the only uh, difference that I cannot uh, change the voltages, the output voltages, as it stands uh, with the microcontroller I chose. But theoretically, I could. As for measurement, uh, there are many, like here is a shunt resistor, here and here and here and here. Uh, lots of current measurements going on and a bunch of voltage measurements also going on. So. This uh, power supply can measure all kinds of things. And eagle-eyed viewers uh, will have seen this here, this connector. This is a uh, serial port that outputs that information currently at about like one measurement per second-ish. Um, but theoretically, it can go up to any amount. All of this still wouldn't have been a very good reason for me to design this whole thing because but I have uh, current sensors lying around, and I, I could just uh, hook up an Arduino to some current sensors and be done with it and buy an automotive Pico PSU. But again, that is not all. There's one more feature that I needed and would just be so much easier if uh, it were integrated into the power supply, and that's uh, this header here, this green one. Uh, this is uh, two GPIOs, or well, uh, in general purpose inputs mostly. Theoretically, I could output 5 volts at very low current to them, but I only use them as inputs. And this is because this power supply has to start up under specific conditions um, in my car and also in the server. In the car, uh, I want both 
an ignition signal and a power good signal. Uh, there, there are two different power signals essentially in the car that I want to trigger on. And this makes it possible for me to start up the future computer that I'm going to build. And this means that I would be able to have the computer on even when the car is off under certain circumstances, especially when, for instance, uh, I want the computer to stay on after the computer goes off. And this is something that the, uh, the current setup with the navigation system cannot do. But also, uh, my other CAN bus stuff uh, triggers on certain signals, and I want to be able to measure those, and I need access to those signals. So, uh, all in all, this is a very, very specific use case, but I wanted a couple of uh, general purpose inputs to, uh, to trigger the power supply on. Now, this is not going to be a long video. Uh, I'm just going to uh, go very quickly through the, uh, through the power supply. It's very obvious there's a big uh, inductor for MOSFETs and this controller here with some passes around it. That's the big uh, converter. That's the uh, whatever to 12 volts converter. The uh, coil is a, um, is a 30 amp inductor. The MOSFETs are also pretty high rated, so uh, this can easily do like something like 200 watts on the output. I haven't specifically tested this, but I have this converter design on another commercial um, project and it could easily handle like 250 watts uh, in that application. So fairly confident in that. Then here is the, um, the five volt converter. Uh, this is a significant upgrade from the previous revision board. Uh, this is, uh, again, uh, you can see here 2018-07. Uh, I've been busy with this project for pretty much half a year. This had a much, much smaller 5-volt converter because I thought I could get away with about 2 amps on the 5-volt rail, but uh, clearly I couldn't because when I added um, hard drives to my server for testing, uh, the power supply just uh, crapped out, so I needed to upgrade that. That's the, the main upgrade. Uh, as you can see, the, most of the uh, board is the same, it's just missing the components. That's the main upgrade to this uh, version, just a much beefier Five volt power supply. This could uh, this can supply at least about five amps, uh, probably more if you push it. And then there's the three point three volts, which is a tiny regulator because uh, boards these days only need about a hundred milliamps. Uh, this is a three hundred milliamp uh, regulator. Should be easily enough. And then there's uh, there's a uh, current sensor on the five volt reel on the output here. There is a uh, specific current sensor on all the input on the 12 volts. So this is the main uh, input current measurement. And then there are some intermediate current measurement, partly for the uh, converter, just normal converter operation, and partly to um, measure the efficiency of uh, various things. And then, of course, there is a microcontroller. This is one of the new uh, ATtiny 1607 microcontrollers from Microchip. Uh, these are new since uh, Atmel has been uh, sold to a microchip. It's actually a really good microcontroller for an AT Tiny. I, th I think this is like the most versatile thing you can find right now. Uh, and it's very cheap as well. It's like 80 cents even in small quantities. has a bunch of GPIOs, many more than, um, than most small microcontrollers of this cost. And... Uh, it's got all the peripherals. It's even got like more than eight uh, ADC inputs. And uh, it uses uh, UPDI, uh, like a one wire uh, programming protocol. So that also frees up GPIOs from the uh, previous um, SPI based programming port, which was very bulky and actually required some more routing and all that. Uh, this is much more convenient. So I'm, I'm really happy with uh, the uh, <laughs> the sell-off of Atmel to microchip so far. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, pretty much it. I, I don't uh, really intend to make a full video about this and show all the software, but uh, essentially it just outputs um, plain text, current and voltage values to, to a serial port. So normally when I make these kinds of videos, I say, well, you can uh, buy it here or uh, it's being sold there. I'm not quite sure if this has any appeal in the market, to be honest. It's uh, very expensive. The BOM cost in small volume is about 40 euros. So that would mean uh, this has to sell for at least $100. Um, 
it uh, it doesn't quite have like the output voltage regulation that you would like uh, for a high-end power product like this and it's also just a hassle to assemble it. it's not something I can get assembled in China for cheap either uh, it's eh, it's uh, it's a bit of a hard board to uh, to sell if I want to so I don't know if there's anybody who, who would really like to sell these boards uh, sure contact me and we can figure something out but I think this is just going to be a private thing that's only in my car and in my server but uh, nonetheless uh, kind of cool uh, hope you enjoyed and see you next time